We've been hearing all along why the housing market is completely effed. High demand and low inventory. Thanks to the genius move pulled by the Fed in 2021. And in case you've been living under a rock, I'm referring to the record-breaking decrease in interest rates to stimulate the overall economy. Now, the unsold inventory of the homes in the U.S. has actually been increasing for the past two years, mirroring the rise in mortgage rates as we are all too familiar with. And typically, as mortgage rates go up, demand decreases leading to higher inventory levels. Altos Research reports that as of the end of August 2024, there are 40% more homes on the market compared to the same time last year. I'll say that again, there are 40% more homes on the market compared to last year as we speak. This amounts to just over 700,000 unsold single family homes with about 10% going under contract weekly and about 75,000 new listings being added. Despite the increase, there are still roughly 300,000 fewer homes on the market compared to the August of 2019, indicating that while inventory is growing, it remains somewhat limited. Well, Josh, this is horse shit. There's nothing for sale in my neighborhood. Hold on just a moment, my foul mouth friend. This growth isn't uniform across the country. States like Florida and Arizona have seen a 70% increase in unsold homes compared to last year, whereas New York has experienced just a 10% increase. And although every state has more unsold homes than in 2023, last year's market wasn't typical as it followed the aftermath of the lockdown driven market. For a more accurate comparison, 2019 serves as a better benchmark and eight states currently have more unsold homes than they did in 2019. In other words, eight states have returned to normal inventory levels. Meanwhile, some states, specifically in the Midwest and the Northeast, still have only slightly more available homes than they did during the lockdown. For example, Illinois and Connecticut currently have nearly 75% fewer homes for sale compared to 2019. In this map, the lighter colored states indicate higher unsold inventory. These eight states are seeing an uptick of inventory growth compared to 2019, reflecting a much more typical market condition. These eight states include Oklahoma, Texas, Idaho, Florida, Arkansas, Alabama, Tennessee, and Utah, with Colorado also nearing positive inventory levels. So why is this important? Monitoring these inventory trends matters because the quicker we return to normal market conditions, the more favorable the environment becomes for home buyers. Increased inventory means more options and less upward pressure on prices, which is crucial in a market where affordability is the highest challenge. However, there's a more cautious perspective as well. Regions with a growing supply of unsold homes are obviously in turn more likely to see price reductions. For those anticipating a drop in prices, they're focusing on areas where supply far exceeds demand. And these eight states are prime candidates for just these adjustments. So why have these states seen such significant inventory growth while much of the Midwest and the Northeast have barely moved from their lockdown low inventory levels? Well. The answer appears to lie in migration patterns, and this migration refers to movement within the U.S., not to be confused with immigration from other countries. During the lockdown, many of these states experienced a surge of inbound migration. People moved from the Northeast to Florida or from California to Texas and Idaho. These trends were already in motion but were accelerated by the lockdown. Home builders capitalized on this and had been constructing a large number of homes in these regions. However, since mortgage rates began rising in 2022, Americans have shifted into what could be called the great stay. Quite simply, we're moving less, migration has decreased significantly, job changes are down, companies are hiring less, and fewer homes are being bought and sold as a result. Since 2022, Americans have largely stayed put in thanks mostly to the record-breaking low interest rates essentially breaking the housing market artificially. For example, Chicago, which typically sees significant outbound migration, would normally have more homes listed for sale as people move away. Many of those former Chicagoans would typically buy homes in places like Dallas. The normal housing market in Chicago expects a certain level of people moving out while Dallas relies on a steady influx of new residents. When this flow of migration slows, 
Fewer homes are sold in Chicago and more remain unsold in Dallas. Austin, Texas is experiencing net outbound migration in 2024, possibly for the first time in 15 years. More people are moving out of Austin than in, at least for now. Also, Idaho and Utah, which saw a significant influx of Californians during the lockdown, have seen that migration slow down to a trickle. Another thing that we need to consider is that home building rates also play a key role. A lot of these popular destination states have had some of the highest new construction rates in the country. If builders anticipated continued migration and it slows down, inventory starts to build up. On the other hand, in states like Ohio, where outbound migration has been more common, construction rates are slower. When migration decreases, the pace of building may not be enough to meet the local demand. So hey, I can hear the gears turning in your head. You're thinking, why is there all of this outbound migration? Well, I'm glad you asked. You see, it's not just the slowing of inbound migration that's affecting inventory in these states. Rising home ownership costs are also playing a major role. In Texas, for example, Real estate taxes have gone up substantially. Homeowners in Austin who bought in 2019 are now facing significantly higher property taxes. Median property taxes rose 26% between 2019 and 2023, even as local state governments took steps to reduce the impact. Colorado, which still has slightly fewer homes on the market than in 2019, but is close to crossing that threshold, has property tax relief on the ballot due to steep rise in taxes following a sharp increase in home prices prices over the past four years. Property tax revenue increased by $2.4 billion in 2024. The annual increase of 19% was the largest since 1975. Since 2019, property tax revenue has increased by $5.4 billion. That's billion with a B. And that's a 55% increase and has more than doubled in the last nine years, growing from $7.1 billion in 2015 to nearly $15.3 billion collected in 2024. Florida homeowners are dealing with rising taxes and soaring insurance costs, particularly after Hurricane Ian. If you own a second home along the coast of Florida, even with a 3% mortgage, your insurance premiums may have tripled in recent years. As the costs of owning real estate rise, people tend to own less of it, leading to more more properties being sold, which contributes to higher inventory levels. These numbers are alarming, but look, this is what happens in order to have the market shift in the buyer's favor. In order for one person to enjoy a steak dinner, someone else's cow has got to get slaughtered. And while more inventory can be a good thing, always ask, why exactly are these homes available? Why am I getting such a good deal? So what comes next? Well, the great stay is driven by higher mortgage rates and a cautious economic outlook. Businesses are hesitant to hire and employees are reluctant to leave stable jobs. Homeowners are also experiencing the mortgage rate lock-in effect after a decade of historically low rates. The broader economic trends that eventually stimulate the market are likely to be the same ones that spur migration and home buying in destination states. So the question is, are these eight states signaling the future inventory growth or are they on the verge of imbalances that could trigger a housing price collapse? Or as the business cycle shifts, will these extreme conditions gradually stabilize? And if we're fortunate and interest rates have already peaked, the great stay may also be at its peak. This suggests that by 2025, inventory may tighten in destination states and loosen somewhat in states experiencing outward migration. I'd just like to thank all of my new subscribers and invite anyone else that finds my content informative to give a like and a subscribe so I can keep bringing you real housing information that matters.